just about to catch it this time. And again, after a heating cycle, that's why it's showing 67 because it's a bit hotter down the bottom. I know having the two elements on would not be helping that at all. But just for that big step we just went through, I wanted to have them on. So there we go, we click into the next step. The next step's at 72 degrees. Uh, this step should happen a bit faster. I've noticed the flow started to slow down a little bit. That is sort of expected. Um, it's still going okay. But I've had to back the pump off a little bit. And see, so this is at the point where I'd probably really like, but it's a personal choice, to pull out that screen and give it a stir. Because what happens is, you know, you're using the, the malt as a filter. And so all the fine junk that comes down through the bottom ends up on top of that malt pipe. And if you've ever brewed before and you haven't used the screen, you can see it. It's like a powdery um, layer on top, which really restricts the flow. But we're still flowing enough with to, for me not to do it. But I tell you what, I'd like to. <laughs> Everything, every bone in my body's going. Lift that screen up and give just give it a stir, and we'll see how we go through the next step. But uh, if it slows down any more, then I probably will. All right. Well, well we're twelve minutes in, and it's saying seventy-two and seventy-two. Let's give it a quick test, eh? That's pretty good. 70, 72.1, 71.9. Yeah, it's cool. We're there. That was much quicker. So we've just clicked over. Got 10 minutes of mash out to go. This is what we're looking like at the top. Just as we're going in the mash out. I just turned that pump up a little bit then, it was just because we're trying to change a temp. It was going a bit slower than that before, that's why the wort's building up. Now just with this end here, you know, it's taken nearly 10 minutes to get up to the 76. So even though my time is going to run out, I'm going to manually put it on 76 for the mash out and uh, let it go another 5 minutes or so, just to make sure. I'm taking those beeping is telling me it's the end. So I'm going to just pause that and I'm going to go into manual mode. I'm going to set the temp. Seventy six and press play. And we're just I'm just gonna leave that go for a little while. And we're looking nice up here. Oh we're picking the colour up better from this angle by the looks on my phone. Alright, I'm gonna pull it. So I'll turn the pump off. Let that drain, give it a second. Because of the cam lock. If you don't let it run down you'll get wet everywhere like I did earlier. Out. You don't have to take this out, but I'm going to use my old strainer. I just want to see how far the wort is above the grain bed. Uh, my beer smith says uh, 14 litres. I'm going to trust beer smith today again and we'll see how we go. Oops, I've gone a bit far. I should have the black cap on to stop it going down the centre pipe. And so you can fly sparge if you have your HLT high enough. Just put the hose in there, but you've got to keep your eye on it then. I might stick that black rubber cap on so all this goes down the 
through the malt rather than down the center pipe. This was actually my daughter's great great grandmother's. I was going to say it's been through the wars, but uh, it actually has. And the last one, 14 litres all up. So 19 I mashed in with and 14 litres sparge. And we'll see how we go. Still dripping a little bit. I could get a little bit more out of it, but I think that's going to do me today. And we ended up about 29 litres. Would be a guess. There'd be no harm with whacking another litre through that um, mash tun if you wanted. Or even, because I've got it here sitting, there's still a little bit draining out. There's no harm in pulling that tun out, out of the way later, and pouring that little bit that's in that bucket in. No harm at all. And just like the usual, I'll whack this on and we'll just see how much uh, stuff we pull out today. I'll put the pump on just to, as we're coming up to boil. Turn it up. I'll say it again, I do use firm cap or a version of firm cap. You don't need to. Uh, I think one of my very original Robo Brew videos from years ago, I used to fill it up a lot more and just use a spoon. Some people use a spray water bottle to help it not. You've just got to keep an eye on it. Turn the elements off if it goes to overflow quickly. Stir it in and you're right. Once it starts boiling, you're right. But Firm Cap not only helps uh, the boil, but helps with your ferment too. Keeps your krausen from going crazy. If you're worried about it being chemicals and poisonous and all that sort of stuff, if you've ever used Infocol for a child for wind drops, well, it's nearly the same stuff. This would be a bit more pure. They'd put other stuff in here, maybe flavouring and other stuff. But in a pinch, you can use that. I have used it. Uh, I think this one's flavourless. But, um, yeah. But you're better off getting the proper stuff. We're just about coming up to boil, and you can see there really is bugger oil in that strainer. Might look like much, but there, there isn't. So I'm going to turn the uh, pump off. The Magic Affirm cap. Doing its thing. Didn't have, don't even have to worry at all. Still keep an eye on it, because you never know. Whoops, nearly forgot. I haven't put the hops in yet, but we're, we are boiling. I, could, I should have put them in now. But uh, we haven't taken a reading. I also want to say, I am not doing a 90 minute boil, I know I probably should, but um, I'm hitting my numbers with my 5 kilo, which I bought, and my 23 litres, I'm hitting, I'm going to hit, well, Beersmith's guesstimating, 10.50 in the end, uh, so I know from what I've said before that I'm probably going to get 10.52, I'm hoping, <laughs> uh, maybe 10.53, uh, what's the pre-boil supposed to be? Hang on. Beer Smith's guesstimating 10.45 for pre-boil. Cool my sample down again. So, you know, 46, 47. Of course, you just missed me put the hops in. Um, it's 13 grams of uh, magnum I'm putting in, I just put in. Uh, it's to get it to about between 18 and 20 IBUs at a 60 minute boil, so adjust it for whatever you want to eat, whatever you use. This is Martin's recipe. Um, so I adjust it for about 19 IBUs from the 60, uh, 60 minute. Coming up to 10 minutes left of the boil, I'm gonna take these out now, just get them out of the way. They've done their job. 
Uh, I know I've changed the recipe a little bit because I didn't have cascade and I thought I did. Um, I've dropped it a bit, seven and a half grams of uh, Centennial and seven and a half grams of Galaxy. Martin will kill me, but anyway, that'll do. I'm just going to leave it on the side for now. Sometimes, if you do want it to sink and you're not using much hops, I'll put a stainless nut or something in the bag. But it's doing all right. I'm going to add half a Wurflock. Oh, three quarters of a Wurflock. And my PVPP, which I've dissolved in a little bit of wort. We're coming up to the end of the boil now. I'm using my phone as the clock. I can't see it while I'm videoing. <laughs> but we're, I know we're at about we had about a minute left when I started recording, so I think that'll do. I have a little flame out ad of uh, I did uh, 10 grams of Centennial and 10 grams of Galaxy again, and I'll turn that off now. Oops, that's the pump. It's not the elements, is it? <laughs> I'll turn that off now. Uh, wrong button. Get that out of the way like that for a sec. I'm going to use this bag again. Hopefully it won't fall in this time. Oh, go away fly. I feel about back at off taps. <laughs> I'm gonna put the pump on. See, I like the pump. It's not just oh, this thing. It's not just for the fact of whirlpooling. It's the fact that I can also run a little bit more hot work through the tube because I'm gonna use it to go through my chiller. But uh, not that anything's gonna have grown or bugs got in there at the temps it's been at. Put the pump on for a minute. I get my chiller set up, and we're gonna go for it. All right, it's been nearly 10 minutes. That's enough for me. Fermenter, chiller, turn the pump on. Let's get it going slow first. See what temp we're coming out. When I say slow, I don't know that much. I think I can open it up a bit more. The groundwater is going to be warm. 23. I'm going to open it, get it going a bit faster, and see if it gets any warmer. That's about the temperature of the groundwater. It's probably a little bit warmer. The things just haven't quite warmed up yet. We're going a bit fast. All I did was just go and turn the tap up a bit, and we're nearly half done. Yeah, all a bit odd. I could have gone a bit slower. I <laughs> know oh, it's going down now. I've turned the tap up. That's about as that's about as low as I'm going to get today. It's about the ground water. Today I got 22 in the fermenter. 
but there's still a fair whack in the chiller which will probably be at least half a litre getting close to a litre and as I said earlier if I had it weighted and drained properly there's probably nearly another litre in there all right a little bit out of the chiller I still haven't cleaned up properly yet well you can't really see it the people have asked me why I just don't take a sample out of the fermenter. At the moment it's at 25 degrees, or just under 25, I think it says on the fridge, 24 point something. Um, and I've already put the yeast in because I put it in immediately. And then I've forgotten to take the reading every time. <laughs> um, but I've also always got the stuff in the chiller to use, and the stuff in the bottom of the uh, Robo Brew too, there's still a bit there. I could easily get a hydrometer reading, but... I might do one later, but it's a bit late with the yeast in there, isn't it? So, but this is out of the chiller. I have no idea how this is going to go, but we'll see, eh? Bloody bubbles. I'll just chuck it. Old school. Is that enough? That'll be enough. Alright, what are we saying here? 52, 10.52. What did I say? Um, Martin said somewhere between 10.50 and 10.55 is the best for colour. My B Smith said five, was uh, predicted 5.50. You can try that out. 23 litres, 5 kilo Red X in my profile. Um, but as I said, I've always come about two points up and I'm at 10.52. Now, Excuse the strobing. All right, so my post mash gravity was 10.46. Um, and I got about 28.5 litres, I think it was, it could have been 29 even. As you saw, 46, and so it's saying I've got a mash efficiency of 85.9. I usually get about 82. Um, and I had 22 into the fermenter, besides all the stuff I've lost in my chiller and everything else. At 10.52. Just in case I didn't have the camera on then, I don't think I did unless I turned it off. I just emptied the wort, rest of the wort out of the chiller. There's easy half a litre there. Oh, that's the water out of the water side, don't worry about that. Um, that's all work out of the chiller. I'm just going to let that clear for five minutes. You can see the, I don't know if you can from the reflections, um, the proteins and that start to flocculate or whatever it is, coagulate and drop out and whatever you, <laughs> whatever words you want to use. Um, and we'll take a see if we can get a nice clear reading from the top for the hydro. Thought I'd better show. I think I've done, yeah, see there's none under there this time. That's why I didn't have any issues. Last time there was, somehow. Well, I haven't disturbed this yet. So I'll have a quick look. Oh, I didn't squeeze the hops today. Sometimes I do squeeze the hops. Oh, it's not really much to see, is there? But just in case anyone was wondering, that's what down below looks like. And I put it outside so it's a bit brighter. We'll have a look. See, so I've still got a fair bit of word in there, which I could have got out too. That's why I was only at 22. You add that to me chiller, to the word I didn't even put in. There we go. So that's sort of 52, 53. Told you my, uh, as I said before in my other videos, my hydro and refract tend to be out only once it gets up to about the 1050 ish mark. Cheers, done and dusted. This is just a pale ale. Uh, Waimea and Citra mainly. Tasty little number. Alright, so everything went good. 
everything went really good. Um, I might just move that camera. I just moved the camera a bit so you can hear me. Uh, everything went smoothly. Uh, what can I say? Most of it's in, been said in the video. Uh, had a little issues getting the top screen on, but there's a few tricks and you can do. You can put it in the fridge, get it on. Uh, in the end, I didn't really need it because I didn't go down the overflow pipe. So, did I have to put it on? Probably not. But anyway, the first step between uh, 52 and 65 took a while. Um, well, you know, 15, 20 minutes. I sort of think I'd, I'd speed it along if I was going to do that bigger gap again with some boiled water. So maybe I would have mashed in with 18 litres and then it, um, when it was going to go up from 52 to 65, I would have put a litre of, of boiling water in there and that would have helped it right along. Besides that, the small steps went pretty good, I think. Or you could sort of factor in a bit of a ramp time uh, too if you desperately wanted you know, your half hour steep um, or pause or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you could ramp, you add a little bit on five minutes or so just to help with that ramp time up. But besides that, everyone thing went smoothly. The bottom plate worked well this time. Um, there. It is there. Nice red and clear. Uh, I'll leave a link down below. It's from, uh, the, recipe keeps, the recipe's from Martin at National Home Brew. Now, just before everyone accuses me of working for him, <laughs> I don't. Um, in matter of fact, I've barely bought things from him because he's up in Queensland. I have, on the odd occasion, bought a hops, I think, and maybe a couple of other things. It was a few years ago now, though. Um, I did go to buy a fermenter off him a while back, but the postage was a bit of a killer all the way from Queensland down here. Uh, but he had some nice fermenters. Anyway, it was him... And looking at his website, that got me interested in how to use Redex properly. Uh, as I said earlier, I don't normally put it in brews to get a red colour because you need way too much of it. Um, if I've got a recipe already and I just want to add a little bit of red, I'll just use a bit of roast or something, 50 grams, and, and that'll give me a nice red colour. Um, but today I got a nice red colour from 100% Redex. That's all I used. Uh, and everything went really well. Except I'm thirsty, it's hot. <laughs> I would have liked to have fermented it with um, maybe a Dunkel yeast or, you know, a, a German yeast of some form of lager yeast. But uh, today was just easy for me to do the USO5. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. If you, go, if you read through his uh, instructions for how to brew, he does it slightly different. Um, he puts it in a, a cube. You could use a fermenter if you had it cold, and then he crash chills it overnight to like one degrees. And then the next day he racks it into a fermenter, and then he puts the yeast in. Um, and especially, at least for the lagers, like, then he ramps up slowly to the temps he wants to the end. Uh, it's just to, to make sure you get a really clear beer, the reason he does that. And the reason for the step mash is to get the nice colour and a nice clear beer. Uh, and malty, and so it attenuates, it ferments out, because um, he was having issues. You'll, you'll read it in his uh, instructions. He actually got um, instructions from the brewmaster at, um, at Best Malts, where they make the malt. So that's where it comes from, if you're asking and you don't want to read the story. That's what I wanted to say, too. That's why, if you're only doing a, a, a single infusion or something like that, mash, um, and you, you know, you're mashing it at the you, you have your water at your mash temp when you mash in and then you drop, you know, five, six, seven degrees. It will take 10 or 15 minutes to get back up um, all the way through the mash bed to your desired mash temp. Uh, and that's why I always say to go a bit hotter with your Get your strike water right and then you don't have to bother about using the machine. The machine just maintains rather than uh, bring it up to 10 because your mash happens really quickly. A lot of the time your mash will be done within 20 minutes. So if you get it right at the start, you're going to have the the, uh, the qualities you want out of mashing at the certain temperatures. Does that make sense? <laughs> but that's about it. I'll keep you updated on it. I've got to dry hop me uh, the um, other beer I brewed, the first beer, the one I had all the issues with. I should have dry hopped that today, but I might leave it till tomorrow. The hop hog. 
Anyway, cheers. Thanks for watching. And happy brewing, eh? <laughs> cheers.